right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, inmate complaints. New details about the hostage situation at the city jail and what some inmates are saying about the facility's conditions. Plus tonight, game-changing heat. Usually almost every season you have a day here and there, but five days in a row, it's been, it's been tough. The race to reschedule after school sports. But first, another steamy night around St. Louis. The countdown now on until better air arrives this weekend. We've endured more than 80 straight hours under an excessive heat warning, and we still have about 48 hours to go. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. We are still in a weather alert tonight as the dangerous heat and humidity still has a grip on the St. Louis region. But there is some good news. Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell says relief is finally in sight. We can see it now, Mike, and we know coming into the weekend, temperatures will be going down. The humidity will be dropping. There may even be some showers or thunderstorms in spots. We'll get into that in a little bit, but let's talk about the heat from this afternoon into this evening. It still lingers. We had those high clouds around St. Louis during the day today that kept us from hitting 100 degrees, but it didn't keep the heat index from getting that high or higher at downtown St. Louis Airport, which is parks over in Cahokia Heights. 115 for your peak heat index today. St. Louis Lambert came in at 114 with Scott Air Force Base at 113 and most areas were at or above 110. 10. Right now, it's still around 100. That's what it feels like across much of the metro area with temperatures holding at this point in the 80s and well into the 80s at that for most of us. Tomorrow, another repeat performance. Look for 110 to 115 on the heat index with local areas where it's just slightly more humid, seeing slightly higher numbers, potentially approaching 120 degrees. Two more dangerous days with that peak heat index topping out tomorrow in the extreme areas around 118, but the heat will break by Sunday, maybe for good. We'll see you in a few minutes and we'll talk about that change. And the extreme heat comes during week one of the high school football season. Teams on both sides of the river have already adjusted practice times. Now they're being forced to make changes to the kickoff of their seasons. Laura Barczewski is live at Francis Howell High School tonight to explain. And the Francis Howell football team actually had to start their practice inside while they waited for this field to cool down, and they're actually still out here practicing. Mercy athletic trainers say that those few hours of a difference can make a huge difference to these players on the field. Less time on the ground, less time on the ground. On a regular August afternoon, Francis Howell football players expect to deal with the heat, especially in full gear. I'd say it probably adds about uh, 10 more degrees out there and the pads. But this week it's been a whole lot worse, even with less gear on. I mean, it's just mental. Every day we tell each other it's 70 and sunny out here. What did you say earlier? It's 72 and sunny or was it 70 and sunny? Francis Howell head football coach Brent Shinaki says in his 13 years of coaching, he can't remember a time when they had to modify for five days straight due to the heat, moving outdoor practice to 8 p.m. We had to get the work in with the kids and also keep them healthy. The 2022 state champions started their practice in Inside, reviewing footage. Hey, as much as you can get the kids water. All while they wait for the field to cool down to a safe level, according to the wet bulb globe thermometer scale. So right now here at 6:30, um, wet bulbs are reading 86.5, um, and ultimately that leads to players are restricted to helmet, shoulder pads, and shorts during practice. Mercy Sports Medicine Manager Mike Jano says the special thermometers measure the humidity, air temperature, direct sunlight, and wind on each field. If you have a lot of, um, you know, asphalt around you, that can actually impact how the field responds as well. If the reading on the wet bulb thermometer is 92 or higher, all outdoor high school workouts and games have to be canceled, making practice and game time adjustments worth it, with lots of water on hand for drinking and dunking if needed. When you look at the summer and all the work we put in, we, I, we feel like we're in a good place, even with the modifications that we've had to make just this week. Senior team captain Logan Scribner says the heat won't keep them from a win. I got to put everything out there on the field with my guys out there. We've been playing since fifth grade or so, and it's our last time playing together, and we want to run it back. When we were out here during um, early practice, that would have been normal game time. We had our thermometer. The field was actually 113 degrees. Later at 8 o'clock, which will be their new game time, it was only 85 degrees. So that really makes a big difference. And they'll be playing Fort Zumwalt North this Friday at 8 o'clock. Reporting live from St. Charles, Laura Barczewski, 5 on your side. 
New reaction tonight to a detainee dying in custody after being housed at the St. Louis Justice Center. This happened two days before Tuesday's violent outbreak that left a corrections officer hurt. Our Brent Solomon is live now with what he's uncovered about more allegations of jail violence just today. Brent. Mike, I just checked in with the head of the jail oversight board who says First thing tomorrow morning, he will have some questions for safety officials. There are reports of more violence playing out here today following yesterday's incident. And that's not all. Take a look. And I don't like what I hear and what I see going on at that jail. Sheriff Vernon Betts speaking candidly after learning detainee Carlton Bernard died Sunday while in custody. City officials say he suffered a medical emergency and was transported to the hospital. Yeah, that's a human being. That's somebody's son. That's, you know, somebody's father, somebody's child. We should be concerned about anybody that's dying in the jail. And then I'm wondering why? That, that's the bit. Why would anybody have to die? In, inside of jail, if there's people who are supposed to be medical folks there, guards there who are watching, cameras on the folks. The death happened two days before two inmates held a 73-year-old corrections officer hostage, attacking him over the food they were being served. Now, the jail oversight board is looking into a claim some 30 detainees were moved to another section of the jail Wednesday and started causing problems. Are you familiar with this? Yes, I am. I was there. They were beating on the cell doors and howling and, and all of that kind of stuff, they broke out one of the doors. Major complaint was that they had been over there all yesterday and all night and they hadn't been fed. They, they were hooping and howling about having had anything to eat. Uh, a couple of them were complaining about having some blood or something splashed on them and they still had on those clothes. Criminal defense attorney Jay Kanzler says he hears complaints from detainees routinely. I imagine again, if you were in your bathroom, locked in your bathroom, uh, 23 hours a day uh, with another human being. Um, what would you do? How would you feel? How quickly would you be triggered into an argument and do something that maybe you wouldn't normally do if you were being treated humanely along the way? Today, a city spokesperson told me that they were not aware of any additional incidents happening here at the jail today, but the sheriff said it laid, uh, led to delays in his deputies being able to process criminal suspects into court today. By the way, the head of the jail has said they continue to address the basic human rights and needs of those who are being in custody here. And that's the very latest. Back to you. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating the sexual assault of a St. Louis University student inside her off-campus apartment. It happened last night at the Coronado Apartments on Lindell. Investigators say they've identified a suspect, but charges have yet to be filed. Many SLU students live in the building located across the street from campus, but it's not affiliated with the university. Just last week, a deadly shooting took place outside the same apartment building. Police say Jalen French was shot and killed during a drug deal. French's girlfriend then grabbed the gun and shot the suspect, he was taken to the hospital. Tonight, Illinois State Police are investigating a death at a rest stop. Troopers were called to the Gateway Rest Area along eastbound I-64 in St. Clair County just before 1230 today. That's just east of Scott Air Force Base and Mid-America Airport. No other details have been released. Tonight, Berkeley per police are investigating a possible case of illegal grave digging. It centers around two men caught on this cell phone video at Washington Park Cemetery in North County. New tonight, our Robert Townsend tells us what he's uncovered. It was a disturbing sight for Keisha Wayne. Wayne says Tuesday morning she stopped by the Steak and Shake in Berkeley, where she works, and could not believe what she saw across the street. I mean, that's crazy. That's unreal. She tells us she whipped out her cell phone and started recording this video of two men she says were digging up a grave site at Washington Park Cemetery in stifling heat. Wayne says the men have been digging up the grave for the past two weeks and were there for hours on Tuesday. The one older man said that they paid somebody to dig up the body, but they got ripped off. So they took it upon themselves to dig up the body. I do feel sorry for him. I was amazed. Uh, 29 years of doing this work, 
We've never had any issues or any incidents like that. Berkeley Police Chief Art Jackson says a cemetery worker called their police department. Around 5 that afternoon, officers went to the North County Cemetery, saw the uncovered gravesite, a huge pile of dirt, and confronted both men who are in their 70s. One of the guys had a long spade in his hand. What we were told at the time during the initial point of the investigation, they wanted to take the body to a different cemetery. Why? Still under investigation. They were taken into custody and then we had to release them just because of the age and the fact that they was out there in that heat. Police say one of the men is from Texas. His friend lives in North County. We are blurring their faces because they have not been charged. It's sad. Washington Park Cemetery is a 103-year-old, predominantly black cemetery. Kevin Bailey tells Five on Your Side his Amazing Grace LLC has owned the cemetery since 2009. Bailey and his attorney, Craig Smith, declined to talk on camera. Smith says the Texas man bought the plot, owns it, and can do whatever he wants to it. But Chief Jackson says under Missouri law, to exhume a body from a grave, one must have a state order, which Jackson says these two men did not possess. Oh, I wouldn't say, like, you know, charge them, but just, like, maybe get them some help or something. Now, in a statement, Asia Corrigan, the president of the St. Louis Preservation Crew, tells us, quote, the ongoing desecration and lack of accountability of Washington Park Cemetery is unacceptable. Corrigan says our local leadership should immediately acknowledge this mental and emotional community trauma and work towards solution. Again, police and prosecutors are still investigating this case.